my friends hope you had a wonderful weekend remember the stock market is closed tomorrow so um, we've got one more day to relax and chill and prepare our minds for the week that is going to be coming ahead um, I wanted to jump in here and make a video based on kind of what I'm seeing this video is probably going to be pretty long because I've got a lot that I want to cover, um, covering everything from news to option chain to actual TA on the chart. Um, if you're new to my channel, like I always say, I'm not just a one trick pony or do TA just one certain style. I like to take all the tools that are available to me um, so that way I can come up with the best thesis that I possibly can. So um, obviously there's a lot going on. Uh, in the world um, that could affect the stock market as far as what's going on with Ukraine and Russia. Um, and right now, I mean, it is just seems like it's, we're going to have a war, we're not going to have a war, we're going to have a war, we're not going to have a war. Um, I think I just saw that Biden and Putin were going to meet. Um, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Putin turns right around and pulls out of that meeting. And yeah, I mean, there's just, there's all kinds of craziness and it's going to affect the market. And what affects the market is also going to affect um, AMC as well. Um, also too, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything I'm doing is for entertainment purposes only. Um, as I always tell everybody, you need to do what is best for you. You need to trade your plan. Um, your plan is not my plan. By definition, it's your plan. I'm not going to buy or sell anything for you, just like you're not going to buy or sell anything for me. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Colin underscore Gladman. It's the easiest way to keep up with everything that I'm going to be talking about. Um, you know, we'll joke around, uh, we'll do TA, we'll talk about the news, all that kind of stuff. But that's definitely the easiest way to keep up with everything that's going on. Um, so starting out, guys, uh, let's talk about the option chain. So I was just looking this over. Um, once again, the expiration date is going to be February the 25th is going to be this Friday. Um, as far as calls go, really not too much going on by far and away the biggest strike or the biggest uh you know open interest is going to be these uh 20 calls right here uh currently there's uh 10,844 contracts um which always remember guys when we're talking about uh, the option chain, when I say 10,844 contracts, that is 100 shares per contract, okay? Um, but overall, just not a ton going on in the option chain. Um, also, those of you that are new to my channel, remember that I only buy shares on a lit exchange. I do not play options on AMC. Um, yes, because AMC is a highly manipulated stock. Um, if you watch me any amount of time, you know that I believe every stock is manipulated. It is not just AMC, even though I do believe that AMC and GME are more manipulated than others. But um, I don't play options on AMC. Obviously, options are a great way to make money, and it's also a great way to lose money. So the only thing that I do, um, I keep an eye on the option chain because I do think it's important, especially as far as providing and gamma ramps is concerned but the only thing that i do is i buy shares for amc um, now i will sell covered calls against my shares um, i actually have a video on kind of how i do that if you want to go back and check but um, when things look a little bit more juicy like for instance right now where we're seeing you know 100 utilization through ortex things of that nature um, guys right now if you do my uh, covered call strategy i am not selling covered calls right now on AMC um, just because you know the volatility is all over the place or anything along those lines. The only thing that I will do covered call wise is if like for instance on a Thursday afternoon I get a pretty good idea of what I think is going to happen on Friday. Um, we usually see down days for AMC on Friday and some max pain pinning um, and so sometimes I'll sell them uh, you know Thursday um, evening right before close um, to then turn right around and and be able to get out of them on Friday. Uh, but that is very risky. Um, once again, you need to trade your plan. My plan is I buy shares 
and a certain percentage of my portfolio I sell covered calls against. That way I can continue to buy shares. But like I said, uh, option chain, nothing too crazy going on. I mean, if you come down here and we look at the puts as well, um, everything that is out of the money, I mean, it's just, just not a ton of open interest, um, but the calls by far and away do outweigh the puts. So, you know, we can get a little, if we, you know, see some decent movement in the stock price, um, we're not going to see a ton of gamma right now, but we can see a little bit. Okay. Um, so we'll keep an eye on the option chain, but, but right now, nothing too crazy. Once again, if you do options, the best way to help out AMC is in the money, at the money, or slightly out of the money options okay um, and if you play options um, anytime you get a nice little IV spike uh, man just be careful don't don't let your green option trades go red on AMC but once again you do you I'm not a financial advisor um, let's look at the chart here so I'm gonna start with my chart as far as cycles go so I'm a big believer in cycles and fractals when it comes to AMC I feel like you can 100% prove that they exist on the chart and you guys know um, if you've been following me for a while I don't do hopium rocket emojis moaz to a million a share or anything along those lines the only thing that I ever am going to be talking about is what I can actually prove through facts and data on the chart and when when and if I am speculative um, I will 100% say it's pure speculation uh, yeah speculation no that's not the way to... I'll say I'm speculating <laughs> I will just say it's like that uh, since I'm a moron but I believe right now um, and we'll jump into my Wyckoff chart in just a second but I believe what we're playing out right now is similar to what played out um, what was leading up to January, um, which is we are playing out an accumulation phase, okay? Um, and so once we got up here, once we got you know to our sign of strength range, um, then we had a backup LPS before the uh, markup phase really started to happen. So that's pretty much what I'm looking for right now. Uh, what I always talk about fractals is even though you know the patterns are going to be similar, the levels at which they play out, the volume involved with it and that especially the time that they take to play out can all vary drastically um, so if you really like fractals um, I always shout them out but I highly uh, recommend following uh, Mr. Booksy is his YouTube channel um, he does a great job of mapping out fractals, and that's pretty much exclusively what he talks about. Um, but once again, this is uh, what led to the squeeze in January, the gamma ramp in January, and I believe we're playing out a very similar looking one. I mean, you can tell just, I mean, just by looking at it, we are definitely playing out a similar accumulation. And so um, let me, let's actually go and look at this on... So here's basically um, what I've always said on my cycle chart. Um, but essentially, I believe that the red box, the blue box, and the yellow box are essentially all the exact same fractal. It's just the levels and the time of which they're playing out. Um, so, you know, once again, I believe we are playing out a very similar fractal that happened right here. Once again, does that mean it's going to lead to a 10x move in January? I don't know. Um, there's lots of things that are indicating, you know, big moves, which we'll jump into in just a second as far as, you know, the way the RSI, the OBV, things of that nature are all lining up. Um, but these are very similar. We also played it out essentially right here. Okay. So like I said, I, I, I do not know, you know, if we're going to see a big gamma ramp squeeze or anything along those lines. Um, we got earnings coming up, but that's kind of the area that I believe that we are in uh, from a fractal wise. If I go over here, let me go to my Wyckoff chart and let's go in here. Let me go to the 15 minute. So like I said, let me get rid of the EMAs. Um, so right here, once again, this is kind of our accumulation fractal um, that we are going to be playing out. Um, so what we're looking for here is in in a uh, in a shorter, a more micro time frame, we're playing out this accumulation right here. So I already believe that we have made 
our SOS right here. And so now we're doing our backup last supports. And guys, we can, on these backup last supports, um, we can still come down here a little bit and this is still a, a valid pattern. So once we actually hit the markup version of this accumulation, I believe that's going to be taking us up to somewhere in, right in here. It's kind of this 28 to $30 range, okay? That's what I will be looking for. Um, also too, we've talked about before, if we invert AMC's chart, okay? So once again, this is just AMC upside down. This looks like a massive distribution phase is about to play out. And um, like I've shown you guys before, this area and this area, and what could be coming about right in here looks like a massive head and shoulders could be about to play out. Um, but once again, this is just AMC turned upside down. So if we turn this bad boy upside down again, we could have a massive inverted head and shoulders playing out. We break through this, then that would take us up to like that 28 to $30 range. Uh, once again, time frame is unknown on that. What I would like to see is, so I've talked about before, where so I think this is a big old fat resistance line that we are going to have to deal with right here. So where this runs is it runs from our all time high to our multiple fake out breakouts along the way. I truly believe if you've watched me, this was going to be where we were ready for our next markup phase. Um, the overall market helped pull it down. Um, plus, it just, you know, I, I think they tried to push to see what, you know, retail FOMO and, and, you know, buying pressure and everything like that would look like. And it just wasn't there. And so they were like, okay, if they're not ready for this bad boy to get marked up, then we're going to come down here and we're going to visit these lower levels um, and, and the gap fill because I do believe that institutions largely control. Uh, what is going on here. So um, this turned out to be, this was looking like accumulation the entire time and it turned out to be distribution uh, because we came and we fell all the way down to right here, which is where we started with all of it, okay? So this turned out to be a distribution phase. Now we are finding solid support. And because we're finding solid support, that's why I believe this is a short-term accumulation and we're ready to start moving back up. So guys in Wyckoff, I um, highly recommend going and, and studying more on it, but essentially it's a constant phase of distribution to accumulation to distribution to accumulation. Once these you know big whales and institutions accumulate enough shares, then they're gonna go for a markup phase and then we'll re-enter distribution and they'll be accumulating shares. And that's why I've always said that that is why uh, institutions and large hedge funds and whales and everything along those lines are always going to make so much more money than retail in plays like this because retail, all they want to do is buy and hold, which and once again, I I'm not knocking that strategy. It's, it's what I'm doing, you know, with AMC. Uh, but, you know, retail or it's not retail, uh, but institutions and, uh, you know, large hedge funds and whales and everything like that. Um, and then honestly, even just tech, a lot of technical traders out there, they're not just going to sit there and buy and hold. They're, they're going to, while retail rides the waves, you know, they're, uh, these big institutions are going to be selling. They're looking for the meat of the move. They don't have to sell at the very top and they don't have to buy at the very bottom, but they're looking to, you know, smash that, the, the meat of the move, if you will. Let me get in here to my last chart. So we're sitting at kind of some important areas for AMC. And I, I know this all looks crazy, guys. I'll break it down for you. But um, so I just was talking with uh, Dave and Rico about this. So if you look... I was zoomed in here the other day and I just did a horizontal line straight across. Once again, I like to always just, you know, draw lines essentially all over the place to start to see what lines might be really important. And I was telling them, you know, right now we are sitting on our big gap fill 
support that happened right back here. So we're, we're definitely in an important time. Um, you know, if we break this support, we're definitely going to come back down. Um, and then obviously we, we want this to, you know, act as solid support because as you can see right here, one, two, three, then we came back, we broke through and we retested and now it's acting as solid support. So I, I think, I think AMC overall, I think it's looking very strong right here. Also, if you come over here and you look at this, our bigger moves up are all supported by much stronger volume than our pullback days. And even our pullback days, we had a 5% pullback day. We had another 5% pullback day. That was our most recent one and a 3%. And so even though some of our pullback days are bigger than our green days percentage wise, the volume on the pullback days is all much smaller, which is what we want to see. Okay. We want to see low volume pullbacks and we want to see larger volume on our moves up to make sure that they're validated. So this is going to be the support that I'm looking for. Also too, why that support is important is if you do a fib retrace from where we're at, we're sitting pretty much right on. Well, actually, we we uh, it acted as support, and so twice our 382 has acted as nice support. Okay, and remember, guys, the the fib retracements, the 382 and the 618 are going to be your two most common ones. Uh, for me, bigger bullish moves. I like to see it when the 382 starts acting as support. Even if we come back down here and we test the uh, 618 at the 15, because I think if we break through here, that's what's going to happen. But you can see, look, the 618 is going to be meeting our long-term support, you know, right around in here, you know, towards the middle to the end of the week. So this support comes from our buy button collapse. All right, so it acted as a lot of support right here. And this is a really nice consolidation as far as I'm concerned. If you come back here and look at this right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight trading days is what this acted as support right here. We are already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. We have 12 days using this as kind of our consolidation and support area. So this is even stronger. So it's not stronger support than the buy button collapse, but it's a real nice consolidation right here. I originally drew this on January the 24th, once we first got there going, okay, if this is gonna be our support area, where does this line up with? And you can draw it from a lot of different areas. I personally like this the best, because once again, you can see how much it acted as resistance. And then once we had our gamma squeeze in January, it acted as support You know, from the buy button collapse. So to me, this is pretty solid right here. It's not unbreakable, but I think it's gonna be pretty solid. I've said time and time again, I think a lot of people are gonna look back and go, I wish I bought a whole lot more right down here in this $13 range. Once again, not guaranteed. It's just my personal feelings as of right now. So the first big resistance line we're going to have to get to or get through rather is where on November 16th, right when we really kind of started our, you know, nasty looking tumble that, as you can see multiple times, every time we have come up and we have touched this line, we have been kicked off of it pretty hard. Okay. So going into Tuesday, that's going to be, you know, right around that $19 level. So recovering those $19 levels, um, then that is going to, in my opinion, that will start, you know, pushing us up here. We'll have to do a little bit of traveling up to our big kahuna resistance line, once again, that I've talked about. Once we get on the northern side of this resistance line right here, I will feel very confident about reversals and potentially pushing up here, making a new sign of strength up here in the 40 uh, to $50 range, and then you know potentially looking for the next leg up. But we have a lot of work to do. This is not me saying squeeze next week or anything along those lines until we hit these certain levels, till we make a new sign of strength, and then we'll probably back up after that. Uh, that is going to be when I'm looking for uh, the next leg up. Now, just like in January, 
And just like in June, that can, and you know, May and June, that can all happen really fast, okay? Um, AMC has a history of those type of things happening really fast. But until we start getting back up here in these upper ranges and everything like that, um, or, you know, unless some crazy type of like $500 million volume comes in, uh, that that's going to be, you know, what I need to see. I'm going to want to see some big volume. If we start pushing up either over this resistance line or even up against, you know, this what I've been calling the big kahuna, uh, the big kahuna resistance line, you know, we break through that with some 250, 300 million dollar volume and we are well on our way to to prices that we all want to see, my friends. Uh, when looking at fib retracements from here, so once again, going from the buy button where the buy button collapsed, okay, this is why. These are the moments that I love about the TA don't work, people. Um, this is why uh, the 618 has acted as a ton of support. And as you can see, the 0.5 retracement is acting as a ton of resistance. So once we break through this, which is going to be essentially, look at that. It's, so the the fibs and the in the in your trend lines and everything like that, it's amazing how it all ties together, huh? I mean, look at this. This 0.5 is pretty much right at that purple resistance line that I drew. So once we break out of this, um, this would be the markup that I'm talking about. It would get us up towards this yellow line in the 382. Once we recover that 382, I'm going to feel pretty confident once again that, that we are well on our way. So those are we're going to have lots of little resistance along the way. Um, like I always say, guys, a lot of the trading, especially intraday or anything along those lines, don't don't freak out too much about that. A lot of that is just noise. What we really want to look at is all of our key support and resistance. Okay. So uh, recovering these FIB levels of 0.5, then to the 382, so on and so forth, um, that is going to be a, a big part of what we are looking for. All right. So overall, what I would be looking for this week is upside. I would definitely love to see us get on the uh, the upside of our first resistance line. So the 0.5, I'd like to at least be getting up to that 22 to 23 dollar range by the end of this week. Uh, downside would be I'd want us to see us holding, you know, right here in kind of this. Uh, 1550 to 16 and once again I, I think that a large part of that is going to be due to what what is the overall market looking like you know picture wise if we are starting to retrace because the overall market is looking bad uh, my friends which is definitely a possibility we want this drops all to be on low volume okay um, if I pull up the can I get the yeah and so what that'll allow us to do is if we drop on kind of low volume, it'll allow our Bollinger Bands to tighten even more. Uh, the Bollinger Bands, you know, they're a measure to help uh, decide when volatility might happen. The tighter the Bollinger Bands are, uh, the more likely, you know, and once again, you could see, you know, everything was lining up right in here and we just didn't get the volume that we were looking for. And so we got a big move, but we got, you know, that, what was it, a 50% move? to the downside. At one point it was like 80, I think. 70%. Okay. Yeah. That was bad. That was real bad. We're sitting, what are we sitting at now? Okay. So we recovered 11%. Got work to do, right? So once again, if, if we stay low volume and consolidating right here, you know, it makes sense to come in here and test this moving average right here, which will be around the 17 level. So there's lots of different you know, things that we need to be looking for. Obviously, we want to, oh, no, not the PBR, get those EMAs. So a breakthrough this and getting up, yeah, it would be awesome to recover the 50-day EMA this week. I think that's a lofty goal towards the upside. Once again, you can see how this is all starting to tie together, okay? Our 100 and 200 is pretty much following that yellow line that I talked about. So, um... One other thing I wanted to mention is we've got earnings coming up. Uh, please go back and watch my earnings video if you haven't. It was the last video that I did. But one thing that, um, and I was watching, it was uh, Andrew with Trading Sciences, and he, he was talking about how when AMC is on support levels and they have earnings, we usually see a really nice 
you know, little pop up. So right here, we were kind of in no man's land. Um, we, you know, we saw a little bit of a run going into earnings, little pop afterwards, and then a retrace. But right here, you know, the one in May, we were definitely on solid support. So even if we did, you know, retrace and we were chilling right here going into earnings, you know, we could see a nice pop after earnings. I really think so. So um, when um, he was also saying that when AMC has earnings and we're up here at resistance, well, then it got ugly. Okay. But anytime AMC, you know, has, has had an earnings report and I'm a believer that earnings is going to be good. So you can see there was a ton of consolidation back here. Um, right here, once again, we were kind of in no man's land on this one. So we saw a little bit of a move up, but anytime we have earnings and we're on support, so, you know, there's part of me, there's a way that even if we pulled back and we were kind of sitting right here on our support line, you know, come Tuesday of, not this upcoming week, the week after, you know, if we were sitting on support and they blow earnings out of the water, I don't feel like if they thought their earnings report was going to be really bad, they wouldn't have moved it up a week. Um, so, and you know, and there's, there's lots of things as far as OPEX, uh, days and transparency, uh, data that's going to be coming out, I think it was March the 3rd. So there could be a lot of reasons that they are, you know, moving their earnings up. Um, like I said, I, I think it's going to be good. Um, please go once again, watch my earnings video, but AMC has got 1.8 billion cash in the bank. Their cash flow positive. Again, we got a ton of movies coming out. COVID restrictions are going away. And I think COVID fear in general is going away. Um, they have got, uh, lots of new business lines with, uh, you know, the popcorn, uh, business and I say lots of, you know, they got a few, um, but I'm very excited. They're acquiring new theaters. Why would AMC be out acquiring all these new leases and theaters and everything like that? If things weren't going well, just don't make no sense, man. You should pain, man. So once again, even if you take squeezing factors off the table for me, I think AMC is going to be a good long-term hold. Um, obviously I would love to see a squeeze, but I'm a long-term investor in AMC regardless of whether or not the squeeze happened because I only invest in things that I love slash believe in and I believe in the movie theater experience and I love the movie theater experience. And so, um, I get it. Some people are just here for money and everything along those lines and I'm not knocking that. Uh, but I personally, you know, I that's why I invest in Tesla and things of that nature. I only believe in the things that I really like and the futures that I want to see. And I want to see movies in theaters in the future, okay? I have a 140-inch movie theater screen sitting right next to me in my home. And I still can't wait to go see, you know, Uncharted and all the other great movies that we got coming out here um, in theaters. So, you know, between all the Marvel movies, um, you got Top Gun. Top Gun, honestly, for me, is probably my most anticipated one. But like I said, just lots of great movies coming out this year. Um, I only anticipate, I saw Uncharted did way better than everybody thought that it would. Did over 50 million bucks in the U.S. Uh, this weekend alone. So, like I said, it's just, I think lots of good things are coming. I think they're going to blow earnings out of the way. This is speculation. Let me say that again. This is speculation. But if you've noticed how Adam Aaron has been cryptically tweeting and doing double images of everything and the well, 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 and the wrong, 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 I think he's being very cryptic right now. Um, there's also a lot of people anticipating Ryan Cohen's next tweet because it's his 69th tweet. We all know how we feel about that number. It's the magic number. But um, like I said, I, I, I just, in my gut, I just, I think we're going to have some good surprises coming our way. Uh, for the uh, earnings report, that's just me. So it, it might be it might be a buy the rumor and sell the news type of play. We you know if we start running you know real hard this week, we'll probably get a big pullback. You know come earnings report if we're up here. You know we make it up to like maybe you know twenty five dollars this week. If we're sitting at resistance, I expect a pullback on earnings. <laughs> you know unless something crazy happens and that, you know, just catapults us through the resistance. But if we're kind of hanging out around support, I think we could see a good move. Um, so anyway, I'll leave it there, my friends. I'm excited for this week. 
I'm really excited, you know, for the earnings report. And when I say I'm excited for this week, it's just I'm I'm excited to see which way the stock moves, whether we move towards support or whether we, you know, start pushing through some of this resistance. Um, you know, when I say I'm excited about something, that doesn't mean I think, oh, we're going to squeeze this week, you know. Like I said, no rocket emojis, no hope. You know, I'll tell you what, my friends, I'll make you a deal. You know, our first over 20% move in a day with solid volume, and I'll tweet you out some rocket emojis, okay? So we'll be on look for that. But that's going to be what I'm looking for. End of the week, once again, stock market is closed tomorrow. If you sell covered calls, be careful. We're in volatile times. Um, if you buy options, be careful. We're in volatile times. Don't over FOMO or anything along those lines. Be smart about your strikes. Um, and at the end of the day, once again, none of this is financial advice. All I'm trying to do is help people. I really am. So if you find help in what I say and what I do, please like, subscribe, tell your buddies about it, all that good stuff. My mission is I just want to help as many people as I can in as many ways as I possibly can. And yeah, that's it. Um, I believe if you follow what you're passionate about, the money will take care of itself. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have a wonderful weekend or, or the rest of your weekend. And I'll see you on Tuesday. Have a good one.